the fountain, W. Wordsworth, a conversation. The fullness of life is appreciated when looking back at our own experiences and the certain realization that we each must live our own life and cannot do it for someone else. The Fountain, A Conversation We talked with open heart and tongue, affectionate and true, a pair of friends, though I was young, and Matthew 72. We lay beneath a spreading oak, beside a mossy seat, and from the turf a fountain broke, and gurgled at our feet. Now, Matthew, said I, let us match this water's pleasant tune with some old border song or catch that suits a summer's noon. Or of the church clock and the chimes sing here beneath the shade that half-mad thing of witty rhymes which you last April made. In silence Matthew lay and eyed the spring beneath the tree, and thus the dear old man replied, the gray-haired man of glee. No check, no stay, the streamlet fears how merrily it goes, twill murmur on a thousand years, and flow as now it flows. And here on this delightful day I cannot choose but think how oft a vigorous man I lay beside this fountain's brink. My eyes are dim with childish tears, my heart is idly stirred, for the same sound is in my ears which in those days I heard. Thus bears it still in our decay, and yet the wiser mind mourns less for what age takes away than what it leaves behind. The blackbird amid leafy trees, the lark above the hill, let loose their carols when they please, are quiet when they will. With nature never do they wage a foolish strife. They see a happy youth, and their old age is beautiful and free. But we are pressed by heavy laws, and often glad no more. We wear a face of joy, because we have been glad of yore. If there be one who need be moan, his kindred laid in earth, the household hearts that were his own, it is the man of mirth. My days, my friend, are almost gone. My life has been approved, and many love me, but by none am I enough beloved. Now both himself and me he wrongs, the man who thus complains. I live and sing my idle songs upon these happy plains. And Matthew, for thy children dead, I'll be a son to thee. At this he grasped my hand and said, Alas, that cannot be. We rose up from the fountain side, and down the smooth descent of the green sheep track did we glide, and through the wood we went. And ere we came to Leonard's Rock, he sang those witty rhymes about the crazy old church clock and the bewildered chimes.